Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving the problem reverse linked list. The number is 206. The problem statement is given the head of singly linked list, reverse the list and return the reversed list. If you look at example number one, the list that is provided to us is in the sequence of one, two, three, four, and five. And we need to return the reversed order, which will start from 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. This is an easy problem, and I definitely think it's an easy once you understand the concept. It took me some time to wrap my head around the approach to solve this problem because it involves a lot of iteration, and I was sort of getting confused in between. So let's switch to whiteboard and talk about the solution. I will be using the example given in our problem statement to understand how we can solve it. If I take a look at the problem and the expected solution, the first thing that comes to my mind is to iterate through all the elements once and probably save the indexes of each element and then iterate it in the reverse order. So I can use some sort of a collection. Let's say when I'm iterating through one, I can add it to a list with an index of zero. 2 will be added at index 1, 3, 4, and 5. So I will have the indexes. Once I have iterated through all the elements in the list node, all I need to do is iterate through the collection that we have built in the reverse order and build a new list node with the values that we have saved. The time complexity with this solution is going to be O of 2n because we are iterating through the list node first and then iterating through the collection that we have built again and our space complexity is going to be o of n because we are maintaining this collection that is holding the values from the list nodes this definitely solves the problem but it's not a scalable solution because we are taking too much time and using up space now let's think about how we can optimize this solution. What if I tell you that we can solve this problem in one iteration while we are going from one all the way to five and simultaneously build the result in the reverse order. The way to do that is we will run a loop where the current node is always not equals to null. Then we are pointing to each node we will be saving a couple of information in a different variable about its next index. I will initialize two variables outside the loop. One will be the current node and the previous node. The current variable will hold the value of the node that we are pointing. The previous variable will hold the value that we iterated in the previous loop. Now, if you start the loop for the first time, my current will be pointing to one my null will be zero because we haven't iterated through anything else. In the loop, I need to make sure if I'm updating one, I need to save its next instance somewhere. So I will create a new variable, let's say x, and I will set it to one's next value. So I will have two in the x variable. The next value after one should be null in a reverse order. The next value after one is going to be my current previous. This will make sense once we do, once we get to the next iteration. But basically, we are setting the previous iterations result to the current iterations next. In this case, the next value or the next node after one will become null. And once we do that, now we are about to set the values for the next iteration or the next loop. So we need to update a couple of values. My current value will become the next value after one in the original input, which is what we have saved in the variable x. So my current will become two and my previous will become one because we have completed the iteration. So my previous will become new one or the one with an updated next variable. Let me update these values now because these have changed. My current is two, my previous is one, and I will reset these. 
when I say x, x means the current values next variable, which will give me 3. What is x? x is the current values next node, which is 3. Now I am updating my next node. I am going to be looking at the current node, current node's next value. I am going to be setting it to the previous value. What is my previous value? 1. So I will be setting the next value after 2 will become 1. I hope you are able to understand this pattern now. So the previous value that we had saved earlier is now mapped to the next value of the current node, which is 2. So now after 2, we have 1. And if I try to do a representation of that, when we were doing it for 1, my next value was null. Now I have set the next value of 2 to be 1. It would look something like this. And once these two are done, now we have to reset the variable for the next iteration. So my current will become the current x variable, which is going to be 3. And my previous will become the current variable, which is 2. Similarly, we will continue the iteration until we are at the end of our list node. Once we hit a null, we will jump out of this loop and return the variable previous. The previous variable will always hold the right reversed order at every point of time. Like when we were iterating for 2, if we only had to reverse the order until 2, we do have the iteration in the reversed order. We will return this variable as an output. I hope you were able to understand this approach. It may look like confusing, but once you understand this concept, these four lines of code, it will be very much easy for you to follow the logic. This approach gives us the time complexity of O of n because we are iterating through all the elements only once and our space complexities O of 1 because we are not creating any additional collections. We are only using these two variables to hold the current state of iterations. Let me show you its equivalent implementation in C sharp. Here is the equivalent C sharp solution. Start with checking with a couple of validation. If the head is null, then we return the head itself or if the head dot next is null, which means it only has one node, we will return the head itself because the reverse would be the same. If this validation passes, we initialize these two variables called previous and current, which will hold the value. The current will hold the current head and the previous will be null before we start the loop. Once the loop starts, this loop will run until our current is not equal to null. Then on line 25, we use this post variable that is temporarily holding the next value or the next node. Then we update our current values next to the previous one that we iterated. So in the first iteration, the previous will be empty. So in the list after my current node, we will have null. Then we reset the values which will be used in the next iterations. This iteration will continue until the current is not equal to null. Once the current node is null, it will jump out and we will be returning the prev variable. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you were able to follow my explanation. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me. I will be adding the link of the source code in the description below. Feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.